are going to see about fundamental rights. This is fundamental rights guaranteed by the Indian constitution that is in unit 2 and this is the module 2. Fundamental rights. First let us see about what are fundamental rights. Fundamental rights are essential and inseparable part of any civilized society and important for the development of personality of an individual. What is the meaning of fundamental rights? These fundamental rights are guaranteed by the constitutional law of the country. The fundamental rights are named as fundamental. Why? This constitution, Indian constitution guaranteed these are essential and this uphold the individual's rights. The fundamental rights are called as fundamental law of the country. The Indian constitution is the fundamental law of the country. This Indian constitution guaranteed these fundamental rights. So what are the classification of fundamental rights? The fundamental rights there are originally the fundamental rights are given in the Indian constitution as seven. But now at present there are six equal this six fundamental rights. First one is right to equality and right to freedom of speech and expression, right against exploitation, right to freedom of religion and cultural and educational rights, right to constitutional remedies. Let us see one by one what is the meaning of these rights. Okay, the first one is right to equality. Right to equality means what? All are equal before the law. That is, no one is above the law. But this right to equality means all are equal before the law. No one can discriminate on grounds of religion and the caste, creed, sex or any. That is, no difference between anyone. That is right to equality. So next, what are all the terms on what grounds we are enjoying this right to equality. Next, this right to equality is guaranteed under the articles 14 to 18 in Indian constitution. We found this right to equality in Indian constitution in articles 14 to 18. So the first article, article 14, the right provides the right to equality before the law. We are all equal. This article 14 gives the rights. Gives the right. That means we are all equal before the law. So this article 50. The next article. No citizen. No individual. Can be subject, subjected to any disability. On the ground of race, religion, sex or place of birth. This is the right. That is the right to equality means we are all equal before the law. On the, no discrimination on the grounds of race, religion, sex or place of birth. Then article 16, the article 16 states that equal opportunities in matters of employment. That is, this means the right to equality prohibits discrimination. All are equal. That is we are having equal opportunities in matters of employment. Then article 17, untouchability is abolished. This article 17 of the Indian constitution provided that untouchability should be abolished. It and its practice in any form is forbidden. That is, my dear student, this untouchability is a sin. Untouchability is a uh, offense, is an offense. That is, this is, this untouchability uh, is abolished and its practice in any form is forbidden. 
uh, this article for this article 17 dr b r ambedkar he is the framer of the indian constitution he declared this untouchability is a sin it should be abolished in any cost okay then article 18 this all are equal means that should be all are all must treat in accordance with the law so there was no provision for no title not being a military or academic distinction that is you heard about uh, Paramir Chakra and uh, many titles Bharat Ratna apart from these titles no title should be conferred shall be conferred upon by the state to anyone the, these are all the things uh, in under articles 14 to 18 right to equality is assured to all individuals okay this right to freedom we are all freedom, we are all enjoying freedom to move any part of the country. And in our speech also, we enjoy the freedom to express our views. You, you, heard, you can see in the paper, in the everyday newspaper, uh, there are different views shared by the great men as well as uh, the common people. So this is the right to freedom. The next uh, point, what are all the grounds we are having enjoy, we are having right to freedom, Article 19. Article 19 of our Indian Constitution guarantees all citizens the six rights originally contain seven rights. But Article 19, this is right to freedom. Right to freedom, that is Article 19A, B, C, D, E and F. Article 19 itself on what are all the terms we are having, we are enjoying freedom. Right to freedom of speech and expression. What are all the views we have? We have the right to speak and we have the right to express our views. This is guaranteed by Article 19 e. And Article 19b, this is the right to assemble peacefully and without arms. That means what? We have the right to assemble peacefully at any association. That is at any uh, for uh, that. This means that right to demonstrate, demonstrate our views, but not having arms. Right to assemble peacefully. And Article 19C, right to form. We have the right to form associations or unions. You know, in colleges and then you know labor welfare. These are all the examples. Labor welfare unions and uh, student association these are all the association through that association we have the right to express our views so right to form associations or unions then article 19d that states that we have the right to move freely throughout the territory of india that is in case we are not uh, we are we uh, we decide to move uh, from one place to another. We have the right to move to any part of India. We have the right to go to any place. That is the right to move. That was assured by Article 19. Then Article 19E that declares that everyone has the right to reside and settle in any part of the country. It, that means any part of the territory of India. Uh, in case we are living in Tamil Nadu and uh, we don't like to live in that place, we can go to Andhra or Kerala or uh, this Karnataka or any part of the country, even in the northern country, northern part of India. This is the right to residence that was declared by, that is declared by Article 19e. Then Article 19F, we have the right to practice any profession. Dear students, you can go to become a lawyer and you can become a doctor. That is right to practice, right to practice any profession or to carry on any occupation. Any occupation or trade or business. That means if you want to uh, conduct trade or if you want to involve in business, you have the right to enjoy by Article 19F of the Constitution. 
these are all declared by the constitution assured by the constitution right to freedom this right against exploitation that is right against exploitation means what no one can exploit or cheat others that means right we should not exploit anybody that is you know by this right against ex by the right against exploitation child labor traffic in human beings these are all strictly avoided that is we should not support child labor we should not support derogation against women that means right against exploitation next we will see what are all the articles deals with about this right against exploitation next this right against exploitation article 23 and 24 This Article Twenty Three declares that traffic in human beings and the beggar and other forms of forced labour are prohibited. So, under this Article Twenty Three, that is forced labour. Forced labour means no one can force anyone. Yari yari you, kattai padam dia. That is forced labour. Okay. Then other beggar. that is you know in the indian constitution this beggary is beggary is strict restricted this traffic in human beings that is uh, regarding women we should not cheat uh, we should not cheat women that is uh, this is a right against exploitation means no exploitation at any cost this is right against exploitation Article twenty four provides that no children below the age of fourteen years shall be employed at work in any factory or mine on any hazardous employment. Hazardous means very difficult employment. That is, this is these two are the essential articles that declare that uh, strictly avoided. this forced labor child labor and prostitution these are all the things we should avoid right to freedom of religion you know religion that is right to freedom of religion we have the freedom to follow any religion you know heard you are you heard about this uh, india is a secular country secular means the state does not depend upon any religion you know india is famous for many religions you no know, uh, buddhism jainism and then hinduism and the zoroastrianism and then uh, various uh, religions uh, the people followed various religion or living in india so they have the right to freedom of religion so this right to freedom of religion is practiced practiced by the constitution assured by the constitution uh, in terms of this right to freedom of religion articles 25 to 28 this article 25 26 27 28 this article 27 25 declared that all persons are equally entitled to freedom of conscience and right to profess practice religion subject to public order morality and health that is this article 25 declared all persons this is what is the meaning of that means that is the persons equally entitled to freedom of conscience what we want to follow that religion or this religion we have the right that is freedom of conscience and right to follow that is profess right to profess any form of worship and practice religion and that this must be in public order and morality and health this right does not affect anybody that means that is public order morality and health then article 26 
this provides for every religion to establish and maintain institution for religious and charitable purposes this article 26 provides the right to establish maintain institution that is that this institution may be in for charitable purposes or for religious purposes or uh, educational purposes okay that is the article 26 and 27 provides that no person shall be compelled to pay any taxes okay that is no tax you know you heard about in the time of uh, uh, Akbar's religion Akbar's period that is uh, Akbar period he abolished the religious tax that is jizya he abolished and for that we have any many historical background for this uh, right article 27 provides that no person shall be compelled to pay any taxes which should be spent for the promotion of any particular religion or religious activity and this article 27 is very important and article 28 that states that no religious instruction shall be provided in any educational institutions wholly maintained out of state funds that means this article 28 in any educational institution there should not be any religious instruction so in the educational institutions uh, this right is and now this right is given to all the educational institution to maintain educational purposes only not for religious purposes okay the next cultural and educational rights you know right to education this is our fundamental right and the cultural cultural means in india many culture that is in indian culture that is hindu Hinduism and uh, uh, Christianity and then well, many religions and uh, many uh, languages Lang in India there is famous for many languages you know uh, the, the official language Hindi and uh, concurrent language English and uh, that is the cultural and educational rights means education right that is right to education for all education for all this is the basic uh, purpose of the government so right to education so next the uh, meaning cultural and educational rights are given by the constitution by article 29 and 30 article 29 states that any citizen residing in the territory of india having a distinct language distinct language a script or culture of its own has the right to conserve it you know uh, Devanagari script and the Brahmi script these are all the scripts any citizen residing in the territory of India they have they are having a distinct language special language a script and or culture of its own they have the right to conserve it, protect it, you know, you see the fundamental rights are protection for the protection of the citizens, okay. And article 30 provides all minorities, all minorities, you know, uh, the Christians and the Islams and the Jains and the uh, uh, Zoroastrians, they are all under the minority category and uh, these people whether based on religion or languages shall have the right to establish and administer educational institutions that is the religion uh, Islamic institutions and then the Christianity institution uh, any people any minority the people belong to minority category also have the right to establish and administer educational institutions okay the next the next right is right to constitutional remedies this is the most important part 
this is the heart of the institute heart of the constitution why it was it is called as uh, constitution uh, part the heart of the heart and soul of the constitution uh, originally there are seven rights uh, there is the right to property this right to property is deleted and the sixth right is right to constitutional remedies this right to constitutional remedies means what these are all the remedies the solutions to the affected person the aggrieved person the in case of violation violation of fundamental rights the right to liberty right to equality right to re religion and right to cultural and educational right the five rights if in any in case any violation of these rights violation of these five rights the people the affected people the victims they can go to the court they can go to the court and establish their fundamental rights this is right to constitutional remedies okay the right to constitutional remedies is guaranteed by the indian constitution by article 32 this right is extraordinary extraordinary means what it gives this our constitution the right to constitutional remedies if any of the fundamental right is uh, infringed or violated by anybody we can go to the court or court directly namada directly court go to the court it gives meaning and fulfill fulfillment to the other fundamental rights guaranteed by the constitution in this way ambedkar described as heart and soul of the constitution this is the meaning of fundamental rights any fundamental right is affected this uh, affected person can go to the court and established so the fundamental rights are justiciable in any court of law that is if anybody can uh, have that uh, justice in uh, sessions court or high court they can go to the supreme court this is the right given by this uh, constitution the sixth right right to constitutional remedies and article 32 states that a citizen can move to the supreme court by appropriate proceeding by suitable proceeding for the enforcement of rights conferred on him by the constitution and this article 32 that is very large that the constitutional remedies this constitutional remedies only give meaning for the exercise of fundamental rights so by this constitution by this uh, right the citizens have the rights the supreme court through the rights what are all the rights habeas corpus mandamus prohibition and co warranto and certiorari these are all the five writs five writs or orders the five writs or orders provided by the constitution through which the supreme court can protect the fundamental rights of the citizens so the article 32 is very important and significant by the writs the habeas corpus mandamus prohibition co warranto these are all uh, and certiorari these are all the five writs provided by the constitution and uh, these are all the remedies the constitutional remedies through the constitution itself we found these remedies the supreme court can protect the fundamental rights of the citizen in this way the supreme court is acted as the guardian of the indian constitution protector of the indian constitution especially the protector of the fundamental rights of the people so fundamental rights these are under part third of the indian constitution in the indian constitution in part third and articles 12 to 35 so far we have seen about the fundamental rights in detail there are originally uh, you know about this indian constitution is framed in the year 1950 in the year 1950 uh, there is 
seven rights seven rights assured by the indian constitution this right to property the right to property is one of the fundamental rights this right is deleted by the constitutional amendment act 44th amendment act of 1978 deleted this right to property this right to property comes under legal rights so this fundamental rights are uh, what are the aims right the, the significance of the fundamental rights means the fundamental rights we have borrowed this concept from usa that is a uh, usa constitution the source of this fundamental rights is uh, from usa that is american constitution uh, we on the basis of this uh, fundamental rights of the usa constitution Uh, we are providing this fundamental rights we incorporated this fundamental rights in in this uh, part of part 3 part 3 of the indian constitution so the part 3 of the indian constitution provided all citizens all fundamental that means all people of india all people of india having the right to freedom first thing freedom you know freedom is a natural right but this is also given by this indian constitution part 3 of the indian constitution articles 12 to 35 this in the among these articles the among these article article 17 is very important this article 17 right to abolish right to um, we follow uh, equality that is equal equality when we consider equal that means all should be equal no discrimination on uh, caste creed sex whatever what uh, different there is no difference at all so by that only this fundamental rights or the philosophy of the constitution it uh, it is called as the structure and the philosophy of the constitution this fundamental rights this fundamental rights are right to equality right to religion right to freedom and right to justice this is also formed the part of the preamble preamble of the indian constitution so you can see in the indian constitution the preamble in the preamble what we can see that is equality justice and freedom these are what uh, we have economic freedom religious freedom and uh, all all type of all uh, type of uh, all in all aspects we enjoy all these fundamental rights in any form in uh, all aspects that is right to equality equal means what all are equal before the law so the fundamental rights established rule of law rule of law this is the basic structure this is the basic structure of our indian constitution who governs our country the law governs our country that is the law the law means the fundamental law that is the fundamental law means indian constitution this indian constitution provided fundamental rights fundamental rights to all citizens not to particular people or not to particular state so this is the Thing. that is the very important part of the indian constitution